Okay, I have a little friend here, actually a grandson with me this morning. His name is Jesse. Here, I'll hold him up so you can see him. He is a cute little guy. He's going to help me for just a few minutes. Last week, we learned about Jesus' birth, and we talked about how hard the journey was all the way to Bethlehem for Mary and Joseph, and how God chose a simple place for his son to be born. And how he announced that birth to lowly shepherds with a magnificent angel choir in the sky. I can't imagine what that would have been like. And it changed their lives, didn't it? They went and told everybody about it. Well, we're going to learn about two very different reactions to Jesus' birth today. But first, why don't we sing our memory verse song? So stand up and you can do actions that you make up or the ones that I've taught you. And I'll be back in just a minute. Well, Mary and Joseph ended up staying in Bethlehem after Jesus was born for quite a while, actually. And they lived in a house, and Jesus, just like all of you, grew. Um, Jesse here is about seven months old, aren't you? Yeah, you are. And he's starting to get into things. And I bet Jesus started to get into things, too, when he was about seven months old. He wasn't swaddled anymore, just like Jesse doesn't get swaddled anymore. And he was just a little kid like you guys were when you were little. Remember, Jesus is fully human and fully God. But we're going to start our lesson by reading God's Word. Now, if you've been following along with our Matthew challenge, reading the book of Matthew out loud with your family, this is going to sound really familiar to you because you've already read it. But we're going to start with Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. Well, let's stop right there. This is the wise man part. You probably know all about it, don't you? I'm sure you do. But we're going to see if we can learn anything new today. Who were these men? Well, they were important. They worked probably for a king. They were very smart. They studied a ton. And they served the kings in their land in different ways. And it says that they were from the east. So if you look, you'll see a map right now. And we don't know for sure, but most likely they came from Persia, which used to be called Babylon. Well, that should be familiar to you because we studied all about that. 
Remember when the people of Jerusalem were besieged and carried off to Babylon for the 70 years of captivity? Well, that was about 600 years before Jesus was born. Can you remember the names of some of the men, the young, young men, teenagers who were carried off? I bet you can. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Yep. And do you remember what Daniel trained to be when he was in Babylon for the king? He was training to be one of the king's wise men. Ha ha, we're figuring some things out here. Well, he was also a prophet of God, and he knew God's word, and he may have had some copies of God's word with him, the Old Testament. We don't know for sure, but it's a good guess that Daniel taught other wise men there in Babylon, who he was serving with, about God. I'm guessing he probably did. And these wise men may have passed down what they learned from Daniel to the next wise men and the next and the next. And now, here in the book of Matthew, we have wise men from the east. It could be that they got their information about the coming of a Messiah from Daniel several, several generations back. We don't know for sure, but that is a really good guess. Look at the map again. These guys had a long way to go to get to Jerusalem. Remember Mary and Joseph had 70 miles to go, and that was hard. These guys had more than a 1,000 miles. It would have taken them a long, long time. That is so far. Well, when they finally got to Jerusalem, they started asking around because they probably figured everybody knew about this new king. They had seen the star, remember? It was a miracle star. They knew it meant something. And they started asking around, where is this new king that was born? Well, let me read about it to you. They told people they wanted to worship him. We're in Matthew chapter 2 again. Well, when Herod heard this, that they were asking around, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. So that tells me that there was quite a commotion when this group of wise men, and they probably traveled with a lot of servants. We don't know for sure, but it made a big commotion in the town, in the city of Jerusalem, and King Herod was troubled. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born, because he knew nothing about a new king being born. And so he gathered his wise men, King Herod did, his wise men, the chief priests and the scribes, and said, what's going on here? These guys are asking about a new king to be born. I don't know anything about that. Is there a new king that was born? What do you guys know? Where would he be born? Well, they knew the scripture. They knew Micah. And they said, in Bethlehem. Hmm, this is interesting. Let me read to you what happened next. Herod met with the wise men. He summoned them. And this is what happened. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them, that means he got information out of them, what time the star had appeared. Why would he want to know what time the star had appeared? He wanted to know, because he knew they'd been traveling for a long time, when that star showed up, because that would mean that was when the new king was born, and he would have an idea of how old this little child was now, because some time had passed. And he said, he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Do you think he was telling the truth? Remember, it said he was troubled. He was the king. He wanted to stay the king. In fact, he, was, he would kill anybody who was getting in his way of being the king. And so he did not want there to be a child king. He was not telling the truth. He did not want to go and worship Jesus at all. He wanted to get rid of him. Let's listen to what happened next. The wise men went on their way. 
Matthew 2, and I'm reading in verse 9. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Now listen to this. The star had disappeared. They had gotten so close. They'd gotten to Jerusalem. Bethlehem was only six miles away from Jerusalem. And lo and behold, they head to Bethlehem and the star is there again that they had followed before. And when they saw it, it says they rejoiced exceedingly. I wonder what that sounded like. I bet they were so excited. I bet that they were probably laughing and like, look at that. It's a miracle. This is amazing. This is really a special king. That, that's what they might have been thinking. I don't know, but they were so happy to have seen that star. And it wasn't an ordinary star because it showed them the exact location where Jesus was. It was over the house where Mary and Joseph and Jesus were now living. So they went in, it says, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. What was their response to Jesus? They fell down and worshiped him. And then that's not all. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh. These were gifts that you would give to a king. They were very expensive gifts, and they laid their treasures before this king. They knew he was special. You don't just get a special star in the sky or one that shows you just where this person, this little child is, gonna, is to be found. That's not normal. They knew this was special. Now, here's one thing I want you to think about. I've been showing you some pictures today. How many wise men were there? If you said three, that's usually what we think, isn't it? In fact, the pictures I showed you, there were three, right? Yep. Um, in nativity scenes, there are three. In all the pictures we see of the wise men, there are three. Why are there three? The Bible didn't say anything about three wise men. It said men, so we know there was more than one, but there might have been 10. There were at least two, but there might have been way more than that. And they probably traveled with a bunch of servants. So this was probably a pretty large group. Why do we think there were three? I bet you got it already, right? Because there were three gifts. But three gifts don't mean that there were three wise men. We really don't know how many wise men there were. And did they come to the manger? In a lot of pictures, you see the wise men at the manger. But were they at the manger? No, it took them a long, long time to travel. And because of what Herod learned from them, it may have been close to two years since Jesus was born. So let's, let's make sure we pay attention to those little details and not assume things are true when we really don't know. Okay, I have Judah here with me. And Judah, do you see the, those little, that little red light up there? That's where we have to look so people can see our faces. All right, I have Judah with me. And Judah, how old are you? How old are you? How old are you? I'm two. You are two. A few minutes ago, he told me he was 40. But that's not quite right, is it? You're two, aren't you? I'm one. No, you're going to stay right up here with me for just a minute, okay? When the star um, first appeared, Jesus, or based on when the star first appeared, Jesus could have been close to two years old. Probably would have been a little younger than Judah here. But he wasn't a tiny baby anymore. And you all know what happened next to the wise men, don't you? They were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. They were told that Herod wanted to do bad things to the child. God was protecting Jesus, wasn't he? 
After they left, after the wise men left and went home a different route, an angel appeared in a dream to Joseph and said, get up, get up, take the child and go to Egypt. Herod is about to search for the child. So you'll see a picture of Mary and Joseph leaving at night. Joseph didn't waste any time. He got out of bed. He probably got Jesus dressed, or Mary did. They gathered up their few belongings, and I bet you anything they took those gifts from the wise men with them, and they left town right away. Well, Herod had a totally different response to Jesus, didn't he? Let's read Matthew 2.16. Out of, our, out of my Bible. Says, when Herod, then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Whoa, that is evil. That is so wicked to do that to kill all those little boys, um, Judah's age and under in Bethlehem. Jesus had an interesting start to his life, didn't he? He had powerful, wise men come and worship him and fall down. He also had a powerful king who was furious that he was born and was trying to kill him. And you know what? Today we see the same two reactions to Jesus. People either realize that he's the Savior and they believe in him and they choose to worship him or they reject him or do nothing. The Bible says that the one who is not with Christ is against him. So if you've not ever made a decision to follow Jesus, then it means you're against him. Each of us must ask ourselves what we're doing with Jesus. Have you turned from your sin, believed that Jesus is the only one who can save you? Or are you ignoring him and stubbornly refusing to recognize who he is and what he did for you? If that's the case, you can change that today. You can confess your sin to him and you can pray and ask him to be your savior and you can believe in him and then you can start following him with your whole heart, worshiping him with your whole heart. Do you know what it means to worship Jesus, Judah? Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus, yes. It means to say, I love you. I will obey you. And that's what we're supposed to do, isn't it? That's the best way to live, isn't it? A ladybug there on is a bug on the window, and when we're done, we're going to check that bug out, because that's a bug that God made, isn't it? Well, if you haven't done anything about your relationship to Jesus, confess your sins, put your trust in Jesus alone to save you, and love and worship him with all your heart like the wise men did. Why don't we pray? Can, we help? can you pray with me? No, oh, I can pray with you. You can pray with me, can't you? Jesus, I pray that every kid listening today will want to follow you because you are God. And you came to rescue us. You came to die on the cross to forgive us of all the wrong things that we do. Thank you so much for doing that. Help us to worship you. Even get on our knees sometimes and worship you and tell you why we love you so much. Help us to follow you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.